Hello and thank you for clicking on this video today. This is Pastor Vern and we are continuing with our video series on the letter of 1 John. We're getting ready to look at some very familiar scriptures in the Bible, some scriptures that I've referred to many times in my Christian life and I pray this brief video today will be a help and a blessing to you who are watching. We're looking at verses 8 and 9 and here's what the Bible says. It says if we Say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, in verse 8, what we have is the second of three false professions in this small 10 chapter, or excuse me, 10 verse chapter in the Bible. The first is found in verse number 6 where it says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. That's the first false profession. The third false profession comes later in verse number 10 when it says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We'll talk about that one later on in a future video. But here in verse number 8, John writes about this error of one who says that they have no sin. Now I studied on that expression uh, to find out what it means uh, to say that we have sin or that we have no sin. And uh, speaking specifically of what it means to have sin, that expression uh, is not usually found in the Bible, although it, it is used several times in the Gospel of John, it means more than just to commit sin, but it includes that thought or that principle, that underlying principle behind the manifestation of specific sins in our lives. That's what it means to have sin. Now, sin is something that will cling to the sinner. It's something that will persist. Part of this false profession of saying we have no sin is the idea that sin doesn't cling to us. And this sin is just an accident rather than a continuous principle. But the truth is, sin does cling to an individual. That's why the positive statement is followed up with a negative statement. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Now, we like to think many times that we're deceiving others if we say that we have no sin, uh, but people know better. Uh, those who claim to have no sin, they're not deceiving others. They're deceiving themselves. It goes on to say, and the truth is not in us. When truth is conceived, it can take up its abode in men and women of truth. But when a person makes the claim that they have no sin, that claim is so obviously false in the life of that individual that it eliminates the possibility of truth dwelling inside of that person. Now I've heard it said many times in our day and age, uh, somebody will make the comment and they'll say, well, sin is a disease, or sin is a weakness, or some will say that sin is something that I contracted as a hereditary thing from my father or from my environment or from my mother, or whatever the case may be. Now, I do believe that the Bible teaches that we are all born in sin, but that's not what they're referring to when they make the arguments that they're making. They want to say that sin is their fate because of some other factor rather than sin being their fault. They want to view sin as some disease that they helplessly contracted through no fault of their own. Uh, they were innocent in the whole thing, uh, but somehow they ended up in sin. This is a person who deceives himself. Now, also, what John is speaking of here is the person who claims that the root of sin and this entire underlying principle of sin has been completely eradicated from their heart and life, um, which is appropriate for John to write about here in light of some of the Gnostic teachings that were prevalent in this day and age. That's one of the things that the Gnostics taught. But the person who makes such a claim is not just making a small mistake, but that person is deceiving themselves because they have no one to blame but themselves. This is describing an even worse situation than the one that's laid out in verse number six. So there are consequences of not confessing that we have sinned. 
First of all, we deceive ourselves. That means that we literally lead ourselves astray. So what is happening when we say that we have no sin is that we end up doing for ourselves the very thing that Satan endeavors to do for us. So that's one consequence of not uh, confessing that we have sin. A second consequence is the truth is not in us. When the truth is not in us, we have shut out the light and therefore we are abiding in an environment of self-made darkness. That's another consequence of not confessing that we have sin. Now let's look at verse number 9. It says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here we see the contrasting position of those who do confess their sins. Now notice here it says sins. It's in the plural. This is important to note because we are to confess specific sins. Not just merely that we have sin, but specific sins. Now when we make these confessions, we can be assured that because God is a God who is faithful and just, that He will forgive our sins. He can be relied on. He can be depended on to forgive our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. Now, although verse number 9 doesn't, doesn't mention exactly how it is that God will cleanse us from all unrighteousness, we've got to keep in mind that verse number 7 is still in view here. We're still in the same context of verse number 7. And verse number 7 tells us ex exactly what he does uh, for this cleansing. Verse number 7 tells us that it's the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son. Thank God for the precious blood of Jesus. I'm reminded again of that great old hymn, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Praise the Lord. There's, a, there's absolutely nothing else in existence in this world today that can remove the stains of our sins. Soap can't do it. Bleach can't do it. Mr. Clean can't do it. Ajax can't bring it off. Formula 409 can't do it. Only the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ can cleanse us from all sin. Amen? Notice it says, if we confess. To confess means just to say the same thing. So literally, when we confess, we're saying the same thing that God says. We, we've got to have the same vision in seeing ourselves that God does. God sees our sin. We must confess that sin and say the same that he say the same thing that he does. But it involves more than just agreeing with God. It involves much more than just coming to God and saying, saying, "God, I agree with you. I know I have sin. I know I'm a sinner. I know I've done these uh, these wicked things in my life, and I agree with you, God." It's more than just agreeing with God, but it, it involves a forsaking of that sin because that's what God would have us to do. This confession that's spoken of is a confession that's made to God Himself. Note that. He's the one that we confess our sins to in this context. And our confession brings these sins into the light of God. I'm talking about sins, the actual specific sins that arise from having the sin principle present or the fact that we have sin. Now, there are other instances and there's another context uh, in another passage that uh, says that we ought to confess our faults one to another, uh, and so on. But right here, it's telling us that this confession of sins to a faithful and a just God is what is needed for our cleansing. When we confess our sins, God keeps His Word. He keeps His Word, and He forgives our sins. This is the basis of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. One commentator said it like this, Forgiveness is an absolution from sin's punishment, and cleansing is an absolution from sin's pollution. So this is good news. This is good news today. God forgives. God will keep His Word. God said in His Word, If you'll confess your, your sins, I'll forgive you. I'll keep my Word. And this is consistent with his character. This is consistent with his nature. 
He's a forgiving God. He's a God who will keep His word. So let me say this to you today, friend. If you've committed sins in your life, don't try to act like you haven't. Uh, don't try to make it such an absurd claim as to say that you have no sin, but confess your sins to God and He'll grant you forgiveness. If you're unsaved today, what you need, my dear friend, is that initial cleansing that we spoke about in the previous video. God can give you that initial cleansing. God gives us a promise in His Word, and this is what you need to do if you don't know Christ today in a saving way. The Bible said in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We pray you'll do that today. If you're lost, thank you for watching. Please help us spread the word by liking and sharing this video. Also, I want to encourage you to please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Find that subscribe button and click on that. Uh, amen. And we're hoping to see our number of subscribers go up in the days ahead. We post new videos regularly. Usually at least three new videos a week are going up. Uh, if we've been a blessing to you, please let us know. We never know who's watching unless they tell us. We thank you for that encouragement. Be watching for part seven of this series to come in the days ahead. And my prayer is that you will have a blessed and happy day in the Lord.